Hey, hello there, RJB from RJB TV. Welcome back to the channel. It's time for game number three between Japo and Voss. The score at the moment is two wins for Voss, but as the score indicates, it might actually not be as close as the score makes it appear to be. It's 2-0, but Japo has put up a really good fight against Voss. He's pushed Voss quite a fair bit, specifically in game number two, where the outcome was actually much closer than you would have would think looking at the score of 2-0. So Voss here again back on the Protoss on the middle top center spot of the map. And then we have Japo on the bottom middle. And actually Voss seems to be going for a mid-gate build order. Now is that something that he can make work against a player with micro as good as Japo? Japo goes for Barrack first, so I think this is going to be a triple Barrack Bolt order here from Japo. I really would like to see him go for a Mech Bolt order at some point in the future, but I don't think he's going to do that. I think it's all going to come down to a triple Barracks here from Japo. So of course, you scout the middle spawns first when you go for a mid-gate, because it's the closest, it's the shortest amount of time spent traveling and scouting that spawn location, and then you return back to the middle. It's all very quick. Very, very quick. So I might have to edit the sound settings a little bit. <clears throat> Just a little, little bit. Yeah, exactly. Like I think this is the sweet spot where we're at right now. I think that's the sweet spot. So triple K with there on the middle. And more pile there back at home. Then we have a triple barrack bull order here from Japo. First Marine is on the way, and the SV is already scouting the map. Goes for a middle spot, middle spot first. Pile on over there because the probe was scouting the top. He's gonna probably find him pretty late into the scouting. Although this Marine there going towards that seven spawn location will meet up with the Marine, and that will of course you know, indicate that Japo is probably on the bottom side of the map on either a six or five spawn location. But the probe there can get in, forces it run away and turn around, gets taken down in the end. I think that should indicate to Voss that yes, Japo is on the bottom middle of the map where three Marines are already out and three more are on the way. One more there spawns just now, Bunker coming up in the front. There's no gas there in the back yet. He's going to have to just rely on Marine Micro without Stim and without Medic. And the Medic and Stim won't be coming out anytime soon, but that's a lot of Marines to defend with. And the Micro there from Japo is pretty good. Loses one Marine there, though. But yeah, keeps most of the Marines alive. Loses only one of them. Lose two Zealots attack and one Marine. Yeah, that one's going to go down pretty quick. I'm going to try to do the same as last game. Or, well, the first game where he builds... A pylon in the choke to then bolt cannons in the choke to keep Japo contained in his base. This time around, Japo has a very strong marine force. He might be able to push this back and prevent the construction of the cannon. But more zealots coming up. The marine production is not high enough on triple barracks to really offset. It's all going to come down to the micro. The micro is really good once again. The amount of zealots is probably a little bit too high. And he's going to take down a lot of those Marines. And more Zealots are on the top side waiting to push forward. So yeah, this is going to have to get cancelled most likely. Cannon in the back, they're warping in. Actually, actually, the Marine Micro there on display is really... It's exceptional. I'll try to just walk in, get that... No, can't get the kills. The bunker finishes up there in the choke. These cannons are probably not going to finish. And now boss might be in some trouble it's gonna be difficult to get the lead back from this point onwards though the marines in the bunk if he he had to unload these two marines to kill the cannon now oh it's gonna be very close oh and more zealots are coming up they might the cannon's gonna go down he's gonna switch cannon marines are still in the bunker yeah, Voss is going to have to cancel the cannons, although, yeah, it's not going to work, definitely not. Japo knows his limits extremely well, and he handles this mid-gate with so much ease. I've never seen anyone handle it as easily as this against a player of the level of Voss. This is probably the best defense I've seen done by anyone so far. 
very, very easily done. Now on the counter push. He's on the counter push. He wants to push across the map, but Voss is slowing him down. He's building a pot on there in his in the front there to try and build cannons to keep Japo out. Japo's gonna have to push across the map very, very quickly if he wants to get there before the cannon is finished. But there's the gate was on the middle, and the zealots are spawning very soon. So six zealots against about nine, twelve marines on the mill here. He's going in there. The zealots are gonna spawn very soon. He's Voss is going around, gonna try to flank as the Zealots spawn. Zealots spawn from both sides, goes in for the fight. That's, oh, he's got a really good position there. In between those gateways, he has a really good position. The Zealots cannot really get on top of the Marines properly, and the Zealots do go down, but it can't swap in there in the front. I think Voss has bought himself enough time to get the cannons up in the front. They're almost done warping in, but he loses the gateways. He's building a Citadel of a Dune, but losing the gateways, of course, means that even if he gets a Templar's Archive, Dark Templar's not going to be out anytime soon. He won't need new gateways. And the cannons are finished up. Japo realizes that he should probably go for the choke, but he's too late. Cannons are finished up. He took too much time hitting the gateways here on the middle. The pylon, he was, it was essentially killed the pylon, but it took him too long to kill the gateways. So he changed his mind and was too late here in the front. Now we have Voss building a lot of gateways there in his base. Got a Sill of the Dune finishing up. Gonna go for a Templar's Archive, I'm sure. Scan comes down there from Japo. He's got. Which means, of course, Japo already has a command center there added on to the first one. Gonna scan there as well on Triple Gas. Triple Gas is kind of high this early on. You can see it in how much gas he has in the bank. He cannot spend all that gas. He should have probably gone for double gas, not triple gas. Now there's three less SCVs there on the minerals. And that might hurt his income quite a bit. So he's now splitting up marines all over the place. Looking for proxy bases, but also um, to get himself vision of shuttles that might come from Voss's base to try and hurt his minerals. But Voss here looks to be going for just a big gateway army. It's a lot of gateways and no robotics. Dark Templars are coming out as well very soon. They're on the way. We got a turret in the front there from Japo. No turret on the middle. So the Marines in the middle will have to retreat once the Dark Templars come out and show themselves and attack those Marines in the middle. We got armor on the way for air. We got armor on the way for ground. So it's preparing for a future drop setup with a lot of robos. Otherwise, I don't think he'd be going for that early armor for air. So the Dark Templars are out. And the Marines in the middle are in danger. There's Marines all over the place, as you can see, the vision is great. The Dark Templar, they're moving out. They're gonna attack the Marines on the middle, and hopefully for Japo, he notices, but he does not notice. It doesn't give a warning. Now he's getting a warning. Like, when a unit instantly dies, you do not get a warning. But when a unit takes damage, and it doesn't die to one shot, you do get a warning. And the medics, they don't die to a single shot. So he got the warning and pulled back, but he did lose most of the Marines. But he has more Marines here back at home in his choke, but the turret there on the side does not protect his supply depot completely. But now he does have more scans, and a second scan is on the way. So the Artem's gonna have to stay in the middle, and they're gonna clear out the Marines all over the place. First here on the sides, because he knows there are Marines on the sides, because this pylon here on the side went down to a Marine. Which of course means that, yes, there are marines all over the place. So he doesn't kill them, but he doesn't know about these two here on the 9 and 3 o'clock spawn location. And he moves back into the middle. He's being very proactive with his marines. He scans again. What did he scan? What does what do your eyes see? The entire base. He sees a lot of gateways, a lot of cannons around the nexus. He sees a triple nexus as well. So Voss here just going all in on economy and macro. He is getting bits and pieces of his technology. He's getting Stargazer on the bottom corner. He's getting another Cyber Core. I don't see if... Oh, there's a Fleet Beacon coming in as well. Looks like he wants to go into pretty early carriers after buying time with a big gateway army. Whereas Japo here has a bigger supply than Voss. It's mostly Marines, a couple of tanks as well. Got more vision on the sides than before. He's got turrets on the sides there to help him defend against shuttle drops. But shuttle drops don't seem to be happening anytime soon. I still don't see a single robot here on the map from Voss. It's all gateway units. 
And he's focusing only on upgrades. One armor already finished up, getting level one armor, uh, level two armor of one oh, tank drop coming in. Not enough cannons. Doesn't get the shot off. The tank turned its nose, but couldn't shoot its load. So the probes do stay alive. That's a lucky break there for Voss, because losing even more time on properly building up and attacking Japho would have definitely been something that would have ended the game for him, or at least reduced his chances dramatically. Because Japo now filling out his base, got double armor there on the side, is now on, still on three gas. He's no longer making SCVs. He's staying about 59, almost 60. He should shoot for about 70 at least for a little while because that will speed up his economy, speed up his income, speed up his base building, speed up his macro. So he's undershooting the SCV mark by quite a little bit, like one entire group of SCVs not there on the minerals. It would really speed things up for him. But he's filling out his base and that's what matters most. 140 supply against 165. And Voss here on 85 probes. He's on about 7 gas at the moment. We have a lot of Stargazer on the side building a lot of carriers. We do see that Voss gets found out. The entire Stargate row gets scouted and scanned. Sees the fleet beacon as well. Japo knows what's coming. He knows what's coming, but first let's throw away some of those zealots and do a small little frontal attack there on Japo because. For now, it looks like Japo has been way too comfortable. He's getting more SCVs now as well. Carry capacity on the way there for Voss. Got level 2 armor for air, level 1 attack as well. Getting Kandarian Emma there for the High Templars. He is preparing himself for an anti marine, anti whatever you can see unit composition. Everything to support those carriers. So the Zealots are not going to attack, they're just standing there to protect the probe that's going to build cannons on the middle. More gateways coming up there on the side. This has just been a pure macro game. We had some early aggression from Voss and some early defending there from Japo and a small little counter move, but after the cannons got up there in the choke, it's really just been all about building up, getting rich, getting big, preparing for the big confrontation that is looming over the horizon for armories. We have 70 SCVs now. You fill, he's filling out all the remaining gas on the bottom row. And Voss there still waiting in the middle. Japo, at the moment he should, no he cannot, it's only on 170 supply. Only on 170 supply, so he cannot break into the middle of this army of Templars and Zealots would actually be just enough to keep Japo contained. And Japo knows and he feels in his bones he cannot go for that push. The carriers on the side there are waiting, building the intercepts. I think six are finished at the moment and five more are on the way. It's gonna be 11 carriers ready to strike sometime soon. We're very soon gonna see the fight break out. Very, very soon. I, I can feel it. When Japo maxes out, when he gets his level one attack on the tanks, maybe he already has level one attack, one armor, one attack, already finished. Temple's moving forward, pushing. He needs to open up supply space. That's why he's going for an attack right now. Open up some supply space because he finished the cannons on the middle. The Zealots were just there to protect the cannons on the middle to slow Japo down. And when the cannons finished up, he sent that army in to open up supply space to get Corsairs here back at home because Corsairs are the best option against Valkyries. And Valkyries are the best option against Carriers. So the Corsairs are coming in to protect the Carriers against the Valkyries. The Corsairs can pretty much just chase down those Valkyries wherever they go because the Interceptors are taking fire, not the Corsairs. Even the Marines will fire on the Interceptors, not the Corsairs. So now the fight begins. Interceptors are still building. Voss is going in a little bit early. A lot of Marines are on the side, stimming in and hitting those Interceptors. Valkyries now joining the party as well. So, oh, he's going straight for the attack on... Oh, he's overextending. He's overextending a lot. Course is coming in. The Valkyries are retreating, returning back to the base, to the safety behind the turrets, but it's not very safe because the Interceptors are taking all the turret shots. The Corsairs there, though, the Corsairs there, though, are overextending, but oh, no. He tries to go in with the Carriers. Carriers are pushing forward, going to go for the command center, but oh, I think the Carriers might go down before it goes down. 
A lot of damage going down there on the CC, but it's getting repaired. Carriers are getting surrounded by every... Voss just made a big mistake. More cores is coming in to hit the, carry hit the Valkyries. The Valkyries are going down, but the Carriers are melting. Although the large group of Valkyries just going down means the Carriers stay alive for a little bit longer. Interceptors don't stand a chance. There's turrets, Marines everywhere. Marines do have level 1 attack upgrade. So yeah, they will have an easy time taking out Interceptors. All the Interceptors are gone. Voss keeps most of the carriers alive. Not sure how. They're barely alive though. Almost dead. Barely alive. But he flew in there, got surrounded, got locked in place. The courses came out to save the carriers, but the carriers are as good as dead. At this point, all it takes is one volley from a couple of Valkyries to take down all the carriers. And then Voss is left with a large gaping hole of supply. Like, this is seven carriers. That's about 40 supply in total. Maybe even, probably even more. I think it's six apiece. So that's going to be 45. Oh, 42, excuse me. 42. 42 supply in carriers. And the upgrades there for Japo are getting better and better. The upgrades for Voss are at the moment at 222. Two, two. Not too bad himself. He level 3-3 three, three is on the way. He's building another wave of carriers. Got an Arbiter Tribunal. Arbiter is great against Valkyries. With the stasis, it completely locks them down. I'm really surprised he didn't go for a drop anytime earlier, but he's finally built his first drop 16 minutes into the game. And he's gonna try to get that into Japo's base under the protection of carriers that are hitting the sides. And hoping and praying that Japo doesn't notice, but Japo is unseaging and pushing into the middle because he's maxed out and his base is finished up. Japo is feeling like it's time to go. It's now, maybe later, but he wants to do it now. Now, I agree, probably the best time because carriers are still in production. Interceptor is still in production. A lot more carriers though have grouped up there on the side, but a lot of them, as I said before, are low on HP. They do regenerate their shields slowly, but it's too slow. Let's look at how many Goliaths and Valkyries are hanging in the backside hitting Interceptors, and at some point when the Interceptors return, some carriers will go down. Some big hits there. Oh, they do stay alive, but the shields are gone. Drop on the bottom right, left, bottom left. Ready to go in. Oh, Valkyrie there, flying into the bottom corner. Sees the cannons. Didn't see the shuttles there, though. Disruption web coming down on the Goliaths and the Marines to help those carriers fight this battle. But the Valkyries in the back are having such an easy time. They're very far in the back. They just hit the interceptors and now the carriers are dying very quickly. Drop there it comes in, hits the SCVs, hits them pretty hard, hits the SCVs on the gas as well. His, his SCVs just drop down from about 77 down to 26. But he has an army and he has 6,000 minerals in the bank and he got five command centers. So that's five times five times four per minute. So 20 SCVs per minute will be Back to mining very soon. So he needs three minutes. Three minutes to recover his workers. Get back to about 80. And that's an overshooting. So he actually just needs two minutes to rebuild his SCVs. Can he buy himself enough time and prevent damage from happening in those two minutes? Voss is building cannons all over the middle. Japo has his tanks unprotected by Goliaths. The Goliaths are too far forward. But more... We have Valkyries here hanging on the bottom side. And they're coming in to save the party. They're coming in, the carriers are still very low HP. Very low HP. He can actually just directly attack the carriers. And he's gonna do exactly that. The carriers are trying to fly away, but oh no, it's too late. They're... Ooh, they do escape. A couple of Goliaths trying to finish off the carriers. Marines are on the chase, hits the Dark Templar with a scan, but... Oh, forced to retreat, there's too many Dark Templars on the middle. He's a couple more scans. Scans again. Two Dark Temples are going down. Cores is coming in there to hit the Valkyrie. But the Valkyries retreat. And the Marines will not do enough damage against the Cores here. Because the Cores have level 3 armor and 3 shield. Carrius once again sneaking in there over that right side. Jampo is in trouble. He's losing his army. One drop did the trick. He's running out of money. He's producing a lot of units. And he's largely just running out of money. Although, as I said before... Carriers still on low HP. A couple new carriers joined the party though. There's only two low HP carriers there in the mix. Cannons being built there on the sides to take away vision. 
big army here in the base for Japo. He needs more anti-carrier units, but we have a lot of Dark Templars coming in here for Japo, for Voss. A lot of Dark Templars that he keeps sending in one by one to eat up all that scan energy. The carrier is now pushing forward. Anti-air coming in there from the bottom. The carriers are well split enough, but they are grouping up and they're retreating. A couple of Valkyries do go down. Tank's going to take it down there by the Dark Templars. Another drop there on the left side. Another drop on the left side. There's a lot of tanks here situated right next to the command center. Back on 55 SCVs with 135 supply. It's going to take a while before he's back in this game. It's going to take a while before he's properly recovered. Drop comes in. Valkyries are in the front, not in the back. SCVs don't run away. At 10 bars on load, temp one time I get sniped, the other one does not. The other two do not. And seven is if he's left alive there on the minerals and carries attack on the front dark temples in the mix as well. It's a done deal. Seven SCVs with 75 minerals. You cannot make a comeback here. And the SCVs are spread about all over the place. And he leaves the game. He knows it's over. Voss wins game number three as well. This one was more one-sided in my opinion. Japo displayed a very strong early game, but then missed his window of opportunity to break into that choke point. And when Voss had those cannons up and running in his choke, Japo was forced to sit back, build up, and respond. He had a valiant push into the middle, but the carriers, even though they were low HP, not enough of them died. And then the bigger problem, of course, is those cannons on the side taking vision away against those storm drops that eventually did do the trick and killed Japo's economy and he had to leave the game. So that's for today. Thank you for watching. Japo against Voss. The score 3 to 0 at the moment. 3-0. Can Japo make a comeback? You'll see it in the next episode here. Between these two here on RJBTV, I'm signing out.